Alejandra. It's been a while. Have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> we still haven't gotten you a newest voice modulator, have we? No, you have not. Well, let's see if we can't get one on order and ready for when you get back. Back, sir. You've been... You're, you're being moved from training to assignment. We got a special request for an assistant. Some office I've never heard of of the Colonial Administration. My training is incomplete. Correct. But we'll have time to complete it upon your return. Plus, this assignment will count for service time, so it, in some ways, consider it an early start on your work. I worry about not being ready, sir. Alejandra, you are more than ready for this kind of work. I didn't want to send to any of those who have completed the training as I feel that they are overqualified for it. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> it wasn't meant as an insult. You're doing very well in your training, and if it wasn't for you the schedule of the program, I suspected you'd be finished already. You are one of our more talented students, after all. I've, I'm almost regretting putting you in such a large chassis, you see. Tell me about this work. Oh, oh all right. Um, well, you'll be sent to the capital world to... Work for someone in Rezacon. I can't say I've heard of him until this request came through, so I can't tell you about much about him. But the work order describes a need for someone with the physical capabilities and combat training that you obviously possess, which you are you know, <laughs> going to be able to handle, with a selection of wood nice to haves that, well, also you fill out pretty nicely. Why would the Colonial Office need someone like me? Don't honestly know. I do know that the institution has been paid the standard rate for your time. There is also hazard pay that we'll be sharing with you at a 80-20 split, so my superiors thought it would be, you know, after we approve of the request and send you on over. I understand. Oh, good, good, good. Pack up your equipment, all of it, and head for medical for examination. When that is complete, head to Office 404 to get your peripherals moved and your transit instructions. I obey. Excellent. Now, Alejandra, I know it's been a few years since you've been outside of here. It might be a bit overwhelming, but make sure to eat regularly, avoid strangers, and try not to get into any unnecessary fights. The Colonial Office will handle your repairs, but such will be taking costs out of your hazard pay, starting with your 20%. It'll be... Very happy if you cut in the 80%, and that will count against your service time. Understand? I do. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Go get going, Mel, and good luck. Well, well, well. So, where were we last time, guys? Anyone want to clue us in, or do you want to do intros first? Oh, God. Did we do intros last time? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a couple of weeks, you know. Cut out new people coming in. Okay. Well, I'm Alex Carter, um, ex military. Turn my hand at private investigations, a um, few jobs on the side here and there as well to keep the money going. Nothing particularly interesting to say apart from that. I'm getting on a little bit, but still, still plenty fit enough. Um, on to the next person. Peter. Who are you? Peter? Peter? You there? One sec, coughing. Uh, <laughs> all right, man, you, you go ahead. <laughs> I'm Van Velding. I'm playing Cash Sayo, a detective from a corrupt city. Um, I do detective stuff. Excellent. Going to look at things. Yeah. We're going to have to c compare criminology and, um, and forensics at some point. We're going to have to have a forensics off or something. 
<laughs> that'd be I interesting. think you're better at that stuff. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Peter. I'm playing Mal, a uh, hacker. Yeah, bit of a hacker, bit of a you know, systems and um, mess just mess around with computer systems, that kind of stuff. Um, mostly just trying to be curious about the world, and most of that's hidden away behind my wall. So. Excellent. So uh, Gapwin is not here presently. He'll be joining us uh, at some point here. He had to go uh, do a quick errand, but uh, he'll be in here. Um, I also want to uh, let Peter know that I've been warned against giving you a flamethrower. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so last time you guys were in hot pursuit of a of a uh, one of your uh, you know the NPCs that came along with you. Why is that? To find out what's going on. It does look suspicious, though, that she may have, I don't know, gotten infested with the malware and... and or malware! Oh, uh, <laughs> and, and become... Or Melahandra has, has gone nuts, possibly. Psycho-cyborg style, I don't know. We, we, we shall see what's happened. But yeah, yeah that, that's my theory. So either it's an entirely murderous uh, android that we have to try and track down, or it's an android that's chasing people. That kill people. Although the evidence yeah. is leaning towards murderous. <laughs> it is. It is. It is certainly leaning toward murderous. But I'm prepared to give Mal an opportunity to speak. Um, you know, I've not seen any obvious evidence of her being dodgy. But yeah, there was an issue with someone getting murdered on the on one of the ships that she arrived in at the station that we were at a while back. So <laughs> <laughs> the coincidences stack up only so far before you start thinking to yourself, hmm. Only somebody's yeah, body's going to drop before you start thinking murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I will say, you know, for the audience that uh, there is presently three bodies that have been uh, discovered with a particularly unusual uh, uh, carving in them of a, a, a sigil sort of uh, design with weird symbols and things like that. And so far of the uh, you know, the bodies, the, there seems to be some variance, uh, but the overall design is very similar to a series of murders from a few years back. Anyway, so you guys are in this, uh, uh, you know, this vehicle that the locals, the clones uh this guy and this lady uh refer to as the bus it is their large move people around on the planet's surface uh you know a vehicle and it is you know it has a little slope pile and there's some windows has a big track thing going on so it you know can deal with the potentially very unstable the frozen planet and uh you guys are uh, presently in pursuit following the tracks of a uh, the cyborg and uh I'm going to go ahead and uh, quickly uh, look at Simon's uh, tracking skill. Where is that? Where is that? He has a skill of 11. So uh, we're going to see how, how effectively you guys have been so far uh, on, uh, on going forward here. So he so just for people not familiar with GURPS, we roll 3d6 for most things, and you're trying to get under your skill by some level. Now he's failed it by once. So you guys have been actually a little bit uh, uh, slow, keep you know getting together and following the tracks. Uh, she has a you know 30 minutes uh, you know lead on you and is on foot, so you will eventually be able to catch up. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, you guys are uh, having a little trouble keeping the path for the moment. Damn it! So, so that's where you guys are right now. So uh, I will say that the interior of this vehicle is actually pressurized, so you're able to. Um, you know, communicate without having to talk through your breathing mess. Because remember, this planet is not too hospitable for human life. It says uh, the atmosphere is very thin. It's like being at you know extreme altitudes. So that's where we're at right now. Fair enough. Um, are we still moving then? Are they still in pursuit? Yes. Yeah. You guys are moving. Uh, I'm not going to animate the train moving. You just <laughs> imagine that this is the vehicle oh. traveling through the the country side. side. I, I do got a little description if you're uh, if you guys are uh, you know, interested, mm. but I, I think since you guys have been delayed, I'll hold off a little bit on that. So, what are you guys doing to pass the time? To be honest, personally, not that much. Uh, making sure uh, my equipment's in check, but apart from that, I'm just a bit miffed that 
if she is responsible for this that I didn't see it earlier. I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit about that, but I'm just I'm just hoping that she's not and that she's pursuing someone. But uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much quiet, checking my equipment, sticking to myself. Yeah, and mostly just looking out the windows, watching for the uh, looking for the robots that were that were known to be in the rough area uh, to see if there's any in the distances. Because I haven't seen them you've yet personally. Seen any, you've not seen any robots uh, showing up uh, so far, and I forgot to put Eli in here because he's with you too. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Gepwin. Gepwin arrived. Yay! Hooray! Gepwin. Although you have, although you haven't actually, you've only just arrived. You've already failed one roll. So I had you uh, roll tracking to see how well you guys were pursuing. Isn't that just like me? <laughs> I even have horrible dice luck when I'm not even here. <laughs> you only missed by one, so you're not super delayed. But uh, I'd say that you know, given that you've been able to determine that uh, at some point she started just kind of fl uh, flat out running, you guys probably have about uh, you know uh, ten to twenty minutes before you catch up with her. But you are following along. So I'm just kind of going through, seeing if anyone's sort of spending the time uh, in this pursuit. You know, uh, doing anything particular? Nah, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I have a wrist-mounted computer. Do I have Pokemon Go in this thing? Oh God! <laughs> and no one's created any portals on this planet. Oh, but you're on a new. Pl you know, it's the future, so they can sort of, uh, you know, um, you know, Minecraft this up. It just generates uh, portals and things like that automatically. You know, with full well, Minecraft will be on every device in the future as well. Probably. Uh, well, there's also Skyrim. Minecraft 2 Skyrim, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim and Minecraft at the same time. <laughs> We're also going to be at like 5,000 Pokemon by this point. <laughs> yeah, that might be a, a low estimate, actually. <laughs> but they there still won't have got trading to work on Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just need to develop trading, guys. Come on. Yeah, remember, this is over a thousand years into our future, so there is plenty of time to not only have, you know, 10,000 uh, Pokemon of various sorts, but also like 400 Star Wars movies. And, you know, you the Avengers, uh, you know, Super Mar Marvel Universe has gotten just out of hand. <laughs> I, I, I expect that there'd be a whole host of franchises that we have we never, haven't heard of yet. And that all the ones we know about now are just gone because they're just boring in comparison and the, the people's interests just aren't compatible with them anymore because there's some really weird old-fashioned people that are kind of like you know there's like really horrible nerds that they have to collect the vintage boxed this and that there'll be some of those that like it but nobody else will like that stuff well the, this is the it's the far future so there's a, entire planets where that's like everybody but nobody, <laughs> everyone else in the universe is like What's up with these guys? <laughs> and Rocky 5000, well, anyway. apparently. Yes. <laughs> Rocky 5000. <laughs> so, um, so you guys are sort of uh, just sort of killing the time. Um, Eli will be, you know, kind of, you know, you know, you know starts going, do you, think I, do you think I should try to give her a call? I haven't tried that yet. This whole time. Uh, I haven't tried that yet. Um, well, I, well, I did, unfortunately, and there was no answer. Hmm. And, Try uh, texting. She might be in the middle of something. No. My, that's a good idea. Uh, he, he pulls out his phone and starts poking at it and sort of what, holds it up and is like, am I going to get reception here? That's a good question. Dorcas <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, 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 mentions that the, uh, the they are still within range of the, the main base, the the, tr uh, the repeaters there are probably still, you know, quite uh, quite workable for it. But uh, he sends out a, a you know a text, and a few moments later he gets one back. Oh God. Uh, um, I, I said, um, uh, where are you? And she said, on mission. Ask her if she did a murder. <clears throat> Ask um, what happened on the ship. Okay, uh, he starts poking at his uh, you know, keyboard there and uh, sends out the message. And for the moment, there's no reply. 
Is it possible for me to be able to track the uh, the reply signal when it comes back? Hmm, conceivably. I mean, Do you have any equipment to uh, to help you with that? I have. Let me just find what they've got available. I know we've got the uh, the implants for communications and. I just have my decking stuff, but I don't know if that's going to do tracking, that's why I was curious. I'd say you've got a a skill in uh, electronics operations surveillance. Uh, you've yeah. got a you know basically a device that's you know a, you know radio capable. Okay, this yeah. is the future, so yes, I've got uh, give this a roll. But... Yeah. Hmm? <clears throat> yes, I've got my, uh, my electronic surveillance, and I've got my wireless communication. I should be able to use those. All right, I will give you a uh, minus two penalty because this is something you're not used to doing ever. So, okay, so give me a roll. Your skill, uh, you know, is twelve minus two, and you are like, oh yeah, <laughs> daddy. <laughs> that was not expected. <laughs> that was uh, a so... damn good roll. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's not a crit, but it's uh, pr pr pretty close. Um, actually, let me double check that. Uh, it might be a crit. <laughs> and where is that? Yeah. Go ahead and feel, feel free to talk amongst yourselves about the whole situation for a few moments while I look this up, to be sure. I was not Excellent expecting it to reply. <laughs> so, do you deal with many murders? I mean, I've known you all for less than a day, and, you know. I have done. Not normally. It's normally small stuff. Uh, missing people, mostly. Maybe looking for... Uh, cheating spouses, uh, sometimes finding kids. That's what I normally deal with. Murder's not normally something I deal with, but every now and again it crops up. It's a hazardous world, hazardous universe. Indeed it is. This is like the second one in a week, though. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting a little bit hairy. Eli gets a text message, and Peter knows exactly how far away and what direction the uh, text message comes from. In fact, you also were able to read the text message. <laughs> that was a critical success. Uh, and uh, you know, as well as Eli knows, and he explains it to everybody, that the uh, text message says, I gathered my stuff and then left. Hmm. So I'm going to turn around to everybody before he replies, because... Yeah, we we still really don't know whether she whether she's lying, whether she thinks she's telling the truth, or whether she is telling the truth. There's, well, the, we do the, not know. Well, the thing is, though, she all she said is, "I, I got my stuff." She's clearly left out the part where the person dies. So either she doesn't she know the person left. died, and she doesn't know the yeah. person died, or she just leaving that piece of information out. Or she left before they became dead. That's what I'm saying. Didn't know. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, it could be lying, could be telling the truth, don't know yet. So I don't think we should tell her that anything bad has happened in case she is responsible and doesn't know that she's responsible. It might be worth just finding her and talking to her about it and then leaving it at that. Eli gets another text message. I will be some time. I will return to you guys at some point in the next couple of days. Right, I'm going to relay the uh, location information to the team and to the uh, driver. All right. Uh, the uh, the driver says, oh, that's like not too far away. We, we know that place. Uh, there's a uh, old, uh, uh, <laughs> it's an alien like airport, I guess it's called, uh, not too far from here. Uh, guess we should be heading that direction. Uh, in fact, uh, all the tracks is going to take us there, but they might be head, trying to head through uh, uh, this, this forest coming up here, so we might be able to make some time by actually going around. Okay. So, so uh, do you do you keep with the tracks and try to go through the forest, or you got to go go around? Go around. They think, sounds good. If they can save some time, if you can get there faster, definitely we should be. Uh... Trying to yeah. resolve this quickly. All right. So then, uh, if you guys are get get around the uh, the forest and are unable to find her tracks, there might be some trouble. But 
if that's sort of the general area you know to look that's is a good starting place yeah if we can go around on the uh, we can go continue through by yourself you know with catch up with, we can always catch up with us if we uh if we uh, need to if we can't find the tracks I was gonna say if we find that location if we've got the exact location then there will be tracks at that location or there'll be evidence of a going through so yeah, hopefully. yeah we shouldn't we should be fine yeah I mean, the alternative is tracking her footprints while we move a tracked vehicle through a forest, right? Yes. I'm sure Benson and Narcus can get through by themselves and we can just go around. So, um, I got to, you know, so are you going to be sticking with the vehicle and going around, or, uh... Yeah, I'm cool going around. Yeah, to go around. Yeah, I think so. Okay, Yeah. Cool. You know, um, Eli says that, um, do you mind if I sit down for a few minutes and take try to take a nap? I'm, I'm just I'm just so out of it at this point. Is, is that okay, guys? You can sit in the car. You should have rested earlier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he just seems kind of just off about this whole situation. And, you know, he's, yeah. he's looking to basically get your permission to lay down and, you know, try to take a nap. Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. I mean, is he is he behaving weird now? Um, or is that just me? Like, because he seems like he's behaving a bit weird. Well, do think about this though. Uh, his uh, you know, someone he's worked with for quite some time now seems to have maybe gone crazy. Hmm. Before or after he met oh. them? That's a good well, question. Yeah. <laughs> good question. My only interpersonal skill is interrogation, so there's not much I can do to help with this. Well, uh, I guess maybe everyone give a perception roll. What's the difference between observation and perception? Observation is watching an area, isn't it? I see nothing. Uh, oh, I always, always forget this. Because I have observation. Mm. Alright. Uh... Observation, observation. Is that? I think observation is about, uh, you know, inspecting but not looking like you're inspecting. Ah, um, oh, I see. Yes. Best the, this is the town the observing, <laughs> <laughs> observing dangerous or interesting situations without letting others know that you are watching. Ah, okay. Well, that's that's not relevant. Okay, perception then. This is a visual thing or a just a regular perception role. Just a regular uh, perception. I guess visual uh, visual works if you got a special bonus to it. To it. I do. Wow, I made it by six. All right. Um, uh, what's everyone make it by so far? Minus three. <laughs> <laughs> Got minus six. All right. So, uh, you guys get the general impression that he's very nervous about something, but he also, it, you know, <laughs> there's might be a good reason for that at this point. And uh, mm. the, the, the clones don't seem to be catching up on anything else special, so they're not going to be for anything else. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on him in case he, I don't know tries to send out some sort of warning or something I don't know in fact here, here. I might mention to Mal is there any way I could have a, a be able to be quiet and talk to someone without someone else hearing in this vehicle oh, oh certainly you know the vehicle is, is chugging along it is kind of noisy also a lot of people have electronic devices you can send text based messages if needed that is also very true that is very true. Okay, I'm going to send a, a little a little message to, to Mal and say, uh, might be an idea, that little little gizmo you've got that, that keeps track of comms, to make sure if he sends anything else out again that we know about it, he's acting a bit weird. So um, okay, you know, yep. Eli is you know, sort of laying down the seats and closing his eyes and things like that at this point. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm going to reply it's a good idea, and I'll uh, try and uh, just put the, uh, the system into uh, in just, you know, listening mode. Cool, cool, cool. So I got a description for you guys if you're interested. Yeah. 
The light of the day casts the world around you in an eerie blue light. The mix of ice and snow that covers everything reflects much and keeps things quite bright, even as the rotation of Kosambi slowly causes the sun to sink towards the horizon. Everyone in the land crawler is for the moment breathing the air of the vehicle, but have at hand breathing apparatuses of some sort within easy reach. A land crawler, also known as the bus, is a tracked vehicle, but is traveling at a decent pace over the frozen terrain until the, under the direction of your tracking expert and the two clones. Outside, if one cares to look through the small portals, one can see the vehicle approaching what looks like a frozen forest. Trees that died millions of years ago and have since become partially fossilized. Some even look like they have le still have leaves on them, by part of their alien biology. Ahead into the side, just beyond the forest, rises an alien structure, some sort of tower being the most visible. Benson quietly mentions that the tower belongs to the aircraft facility and it sits on the outer edge of a substantial metropolitan ruin, and that perhaps if your prey is to make an escape, they might be heading towards that city. I think I prefer the term quarry than prey, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to if they want to call her prey, then, I mean, that's, that's being even more weird than normal. <laughs> well, they are a bunch of clones. They don't get out much. Mm. <laughs> we need to get out and see new people. I, you know, not more clones of each other so uh mal so so two things are going to happen here in a few in the next few moments as you guys start uh, rounding about the edge of the uh of the uh, uh the forest first off mal you get basically a a hardware handshake call okay do you answer it does it initially look like it's coming from some known tech or from one of the alien tech? It seems like something you've not encountered before. Okay. Yes, I'm going to uh, to answer this one. See what we can work for approaching. Is. Make a will save. <laughs> <laughs> so basically roll your will willpower, and uh, if you uh, succeed, yeah. let me know. If I did not. Succeeded by two. All right. And you succeeded by two. Yep. For a brief moment, you feel kind of weird. In fact, you 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 reach your hand up and you 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 rub your nose and you put your hand down, and then you then you then you're back to normal, and that signal's gone. Well, that's an odd one. Does yeah. he at any point feel the urge to kill? No. <laughs> no, no, nothing good. like that. Good, good. So, uh, guys, I just received a weird uh, signal uh, in the area, and it appears to have the ability to, to affect me somehow. It lasted only for a second, but I managed to get rid of it, but uh, there's something fishy going on in this area. You kids uh, and your phones. Because, because at that exact moment, uh, there is a sound of plinking. Like like hail on the outside of the tra the bus or something? Um, more like something's colliding with it. It's like some sort of high velocity round, perhaps. So like Fucking like hell. hail made of lead, sort of thing. <laughs> a hail made out of something potentially very mm -hmm. deadly here. Ball ballistic thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to run up the front and find out what the hell the clones thing's going on. All right, so first off, I need to do a, a little bit of math here. So I made that uh, by five. And uh, so that means that... Uh, that means... That, ooh, that means three of the, the rounds hit... Yeah, the vehicle. Doo -doo -doo. Where is my damage? Where is my major damage here? Uh, Yeesh. Yep. That's some <laughs> fucking big rounds. Good God. <laughs> All right. So 
the, this is uh, so this is a little bit of I'm gonna do a little bit of primer because we do got some new players here on some of the basic uh, the basics of combat here. So uh, to roll for a hit, uh, you basically are trying to roll under your skill, uh, like with any other skill, uh, you know, uh, situation. Uh, there are a number of bonuses here, and I will for full, uh, you know, you know, you know, accounting here. I'm going to go through uh, each of the ones that matter here. So the 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 entity that is firing upon you is braced, so they get a plus one. They have uh, using they have taken time to aim, and thus get a plus seven base from their uh, their weapon of choice, as well as some other things such as using a scope gives another plus two. Uh, the they have spent extra time aiming for another plus two, and they are firing multiple shots for another plus two. Uh, they have, uh, so that means they're using, you know, you're going through their ammo faster, but they are more likely to hit because you're sort of spraying an area. Uh, they are also targeting the vehicle, which is a, you know, at its largest dimension, plus five, but uh, given the angle, it's only a plus three for them. And uh, they are also at range for a, a minus sixteen, for a total, hey. yeah, for a total bonus of plus one <laughs> <laughs> to their skill. <laughs> So, so this um, is like super sniper territory. A little bit, yeah. Um, so the I did roll some damage there. It looks very scary. Now you are, this is also targeting the vehicle and not you guys. So that's that is scary. Different. If that hit me, it would be very <laughs> scary. Um, yeah. It, yeah, the the damage uh, you know, does have a armor divisor because of the type of weapon it is. What's the divisor? Uh, I'm curious about what how big that is. So the, uh, oh, this is why I need the calculator. <laughs> so the armor for the uh, vehicle is 40, which is pretty dang good. But the armor divisor is three. So it divides that by three. So from all these That's damages, you subtract, you know, yeah. subtract 13 from these. Um, so at the first damage will be, you know, uh, you know uh, 12, 10, and 14. So that's where we're at as far as base damage there. It's also piercing minus, so that's also halved on top of that for a six, five, seven final damage. So, could be a lot worse. So they're firing a non yeah, the piercing right out of the vehicle. So I just wanted to go through the steps by step as this thing goes off so you guys aren't totally like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> well, my first question I'm going to very quickly say is, has this vehicle got weaponry that can be controlled from the outside of it? No, from the inside, uh, I mean. You have you have not seen any. <sighs> okay, carry on. <laughs> Can we see out the windows what's shooting at us? Yep. I, I accidentally moved the thing. <laughs> uh, uh, so, give, give me a moment here. I want to make sure I'm getting everything done correctly. Doing a full counting, because... Your vehicle now has 82 hit points left. Just so you know. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, since we are kind of in a combat situation, though not a firm one, we are going to be going by people's speeds. So that means the first person who is able to act uh, has already acted. Uh, but Simon, you're up next. Uh, is, there a, is there a top hatch or like a sunroof on this thing? Uh, yes. However, the interior is pressurized, and so in order to do the, you know, to, uh, you know, everything, and so everyone will need to pretty much immediately put your uh, might uh, might affect people uh, adversely if you don't, you know, go through the full cycle, which will take a turn. All right. In that case, I think I probably need to roll against my impulsive. All right. Go for your. Go for it. Let's see, where is my impulsive and how does that work? <laughs> so uh, your impulsive uh, is a disadvantage that uh, you got to, uh, you know, so you're, you're thrill seeking. It's like, there's something going on. Let's go do this thing. And so your, your control rating is 12. So you have to roll under that. All right. Oh, All usually. Right. You're able to c control yourself. Good. I do not open the hatch. That would be a bad idea. And I instead try to look through the front window to see if I can see what's shooting us. All right. 
So give me a perception roll. I think I made that by two. All right. So uh, you were able to, because you are also in the front, I'm you know, giving you a little bit more information than other folks might get. Uh, you were able to sort of see the general uh, uh, be, uh, behavior of uh, the the impacts that came through that you know, struck the vehicle. Uh, that they appeared to be coming, uh, let's say, a, a line uh, sort of like this across the front of the vehicle. Uh, some of them, you know, plinged off the little plow. Nose blade front. thing. <laughs> the nose nose blade thing, which is now detached because despite me having it grouped before. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, the three hits uh, did impact the vehicle in uh, a negative fashion. Uh, but the general trajectory suggested that the the firing came from. There's my little dealio again. From this general direction, which is pretty much straight towards that airport tower over there. So the the bullets came in from like that. You're saying? Yes. Just happens to be where those tracks are in the in the dirt. Hmm. Strange, isn't it? By the way, the tracks over there are coincidence. I just wanted to add something you know, curious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short story there is, you know, you see the little bones up the top at the end mm -hmm. of them? Mm -hmm. uh, whatever creature this was, was wandering through here and then died. That's that's all it is. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it rotted away so quickly, even its tracks weren't blown away. <laughs> In that case, I'll just yell, it's probably coming from the tower, and I think that's all I can do this turn. All right. So that's what you're doing. All right. Uh, next up, it's Norcus and Benson. Uh, they are in a bit of a panic, but uh, they are going to, you know, you know, turn the vehicle. Now, I'm not going to actually do it on the map because this is all sort of, you know, things are coming in from far away at this point. Um, and they're going to basically point it towards the tower so that they have a smaller profile and more of the blade up front is covering the vulnerable, you know, bulk of the of the uh, vehicle. And uh, they're gonna, you know, and uh, you know, we're gonna have Benson calling in, you know, start calling in uh, to the the home base that we we someone's been someone started shooting at us. We are this location, this location, etc. So okay. they're sort of in in crisis management mode right now. Next up is Cash. All right. Well, we've decided to charge the position. I assume that we're are we going flat out. Well, they, they've turned the vehicle so it's pointed towards that direction. They've not changed their speed at all. But you can all right, suggest that. and tell them that we need to hit that tower as quickly as we can. Otherwise, they're going to keep shooting. Uh, Benston, you know, nods and says, I think you're right. We need to get up there as quickly as possible. They have height advantage, potentially, if they're up in the tower. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Otherwise, we're sitting ducks or future version of that term. <laughs> else we can... Anything else you're going to do? Nope, not really. I mean, we might have to bail, so I'll get ready for that. All right, Mal, what you up to? Uh, I'm going to grab a, uh, a mask off the... Uh, being prepared for our decompression, because if someone's shooting, they can penetrate the hole. That way it should be an instant decompression. Mm, and... Very good idea. Hmm. And I'm going to position myself for a, uh, a quick evac if we need to. Because if we can get close enough, I can potentially uh, move around us. I've got a little bit of stealth ability. But I don't want to jump yet because it was too far out. All right. Um, cool, just cool, iron cool. up what I, what I can see from the distance, which at this distance, probably just the tower, and that's it. Yeah, you can see the tower. Uh, you guys are still, like, you know, close to a mile out. Uh, so um, this is still, you know, you know, ways off. Yeah, but from where I am at the back, but, I'm, just, I'm just looking out to make sure there's nothing else going to sort of flank us. All right. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, next up is Eli, who is roused from his snap. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what's going on? Huh? What was that? And uh, do I need to roll any of his disadvantages here? Uh, don't think so at the moment. Uh, I should really organize these by, by title here. There we go. 
Okay. So uh, that will not come to effect until probably after the battle. Anyway. <laughs> um, next up um, is Alex. Yay, slow, slow, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there any cover that I can see between us and the tower that we'd be able to utilize to maybe, it might take us longer to get there, but we might be able to stop some of the fire coming in. All right, uh, give me a perception roll. I'll, I'll give you a plus two bonus to this because you are actively looking out and it's sort of, you know, other than the parts that are obscured by the forest, uh, you can see, you know, pr pretty much uh, a good bit of territory here. Plus two, huh? Yeah, yeah. Made it by three. All right. Uh, I'm going to say that you see a, uh, a a rise that may provide, uh, you know, like a, a, a small, you know, lump of, of, of ground that rises up that may give you guys some uh, some partial cover uh, you know, as you approach the uh, tower. It will be a slight deviation from the main course, but it's not too far off. But if it gives us a... a a shorter amount of time where we're in fire, then it's going to be benefit overall. Hopefully, assuming that this uh, is for sure coming from the tower. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm good putting knows his stuff. I'm, I'm going to be... Uh, well, Simon, should I say, knows his stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's, that's probably true. Um, okay, I'm going to turn around to the clones and say uh, maybe we should uh, head, head a little off course around there, get some cover on the approach. Might mean that we hit get less fire, and I'm gonna turn around to everybody else without even waiting for a reply from those guys because they it's their fucking bus. They can drive it however they want. I'm gonna uh, get my equipment together. Um, and is there any kind of buckling up kind of a thing? Like <laughs> there's got to be some kind of because I think we're in for a rough ride. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn around to everybody as I'm getting my equipment together, get me coat on, get a respirator, and I'm just buckle up myself and say, "You better get up for a get get ready for a rough ride, everybody." <laughs> All right, so uh, so your turn is for our mystery person's turn, and you don't see anything going on. Hmm. Well, if nothing's happening, I guess I'll do the prep for rough landing stuff that everyone else is doing. Get my armor ready and mask ready to go. You know, you secure your mask, secure your you know, your seatbelt, secure your butt, all that stuff. Excellent. Um, then, in that case, we are moving on to Norcus and Benson, and they are going to accelerate as best they can. Yay. Uh, so I need to roll. 86. Their driving is mediocre overall, uh. but they are they are going faster. So uh, you estimate that you'll be able to uh, reach the base of the tower in approximately, uh, let's, let's say, let's say uh, 12, uh, to 12 rounds in total. Okay. So. If they um, keep hitting us like they did before, then we ain't going to survive that long. <laughs> all right. So uh, next up is Cash. How you doing? Anything special here? Um... I'm going to ask uh, Carter over there if <laughs> if his friend Mal is some kind of sniper. Go ahead and respond if you like. Hmm. As far as I'm aware, um, I mean, Mel was mostly just hand-to-hand -hand combat that I saw. Sniping just doesn't seem like a style. Good to know. Thanks. All right. Now, Mal, you up to anything? Uh, at this point in time, we haven't really got much more we can be doing other than prepping to see if I can not get killed. I'm still uh, checking, making sure there's nothing else going to uh, flank us, because if we've been shot by one thing, there's no be something else to watch out for. All right, give me a perception check. Yeah. Yep, yeah, pass. All right, you do not see anything, a uh, robot or anything else. No, no giant cyborgs or, you know, space monsters. So, so they seem just, to be good. So there's just a tower shooting at us, potentially. Oh, well, that's, that's all you could tell at this mm -hmm. moment. Oh, well, we have to right, fire uh, also, yeah. You know, Eli sees people sort of running up and, you know, in kind of <laughs> lockdown mode, and he starts following, you know, following suit. 
Uh, Alex, you up to anything special? Um, not really. Um, might light a cigarette. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably about it, though. <laughs> Sam, this seems to me like the sort of time when a cigarette would probably be a really good idea. Hmm. And do you have any uh, disadvantages that might suggest that you should really do this? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually. No specific disadvantages for this. Um... <laughs> You know, I don't think Sense of Duty covers this one. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. All right. So uh, I will say that if this, if there's not going to be any further actions or calls for actions in the, in the meantime until something else happens, that for the next uh, five rounds that nothing seems to happen. Hmm. I figured they were reloading and it was like a fire every other round kind of a deal, but... But then you guys are also getting closer. You guys are getting pretty close to that uh, that little ridge there. Um, and so I'm going to do another attack roll. Oh. All right. So the roll is 10. Uh, you are at, uh, you know, this is approximately the halfway point towards getting getting in. So the distance is now only a minus 14. Do. Uh, and so that you know that will increase the total bonus by uh, by two. Uh, everything else is the same, except you guys are now close enough to that, to that uh, little uh, ridge there. That uh, I'm going to say that the profile of the vehicle is also reduced, so that you are going to get a uh, you know they're going to get a minus two. So it's basically the same uh, sort of uh, bonus that they had before. Um, so once again, three hits. Do do. Boink, boink, boink. So that's going to be a 15, uh, a 9, and an 11. Uh, divide those by 2, you know, round it down. So you're going to get 7, 4, and 5 damage. I think the vehicle's going to handle it if it's so infrequent. I thought they'd be shooting much more frequently. They may be now we're over the ridge. Mm, maybe. I hope we don't have to get out of the car because any one of those shots will kill me instantly. Same. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're if they're if they're energy or if they're burning or or um or explosive, then that's that's I I might be able to handle one or two, <laughs> but they're not. These are physical piercing type stuff. It'll just cut me in two. It's like some sort of automated sniper system. It's really kind of strange. Hmm. Automated, you say? Did you say automated? Mm. I said like an automated like machine gun sort of thing. Uh, um, but for this, this particular strike, I think I'm going to roll on the vehicle hit table because that sounds like fun. Oh, mm. see where it got hit. <laughs> for for at least one of the rolls here. Um, so uh, that will uh, that one of those hits. Uh, I'll say the the smallest of the of the the group of the four damage there, and. Uh, it hits the, hits the straight up body. That's not too interesting. Hmm. Nope. But it good. It didn't. It didn't shoot out like you know, the the pressure regulator of the internal well, atmosphere or something. The, the pressure regulator, no. But there is something oh. that happens here. Sure. Uh, Your the vehicle has sustained a major ru uh, wound, so it needs to make a health roll. How healthy is our vehicle? Um, it's made the health roll, so its engine does not die. Oh God! <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that, we, we dodged an engine death. <laughs> All right, so you guys had another uh, round of attack against you. Uh, is there going to be any new actions in the meantime? I guess I'll make another perception if we're closer. All right, uh, go ahead and give me that roll then. And you, since you have a general idea of what you're looking for. By three. All right, and I'm going to say it's even more so. The, the shots are definitely coming from the uh, uh, you know airport tower. Do those clones have any information on this ruin? Uh, they they uh, will say that this place is not structurally sound, but it should be uh, okay to enter and move around. You know, on foot. Uh, they believe that they ha that there's a probably they believe there's an entrance into the structure uh near the base of the tower 
So uh, if you you know if you if the plan is to try to run up there and uh, you know you know stop this attacker, uh, that is probably the only way to sort of get them without you know having to go through the extensive uh, uh, network of the airport. Yeah, that's my plan, guys. Yeah, just charge in there and find out what the fuck's going on. So we're about what half a mile out now, if that. Yeah, and get close it in pretty quickly. These... I'm kind of fudging the exact. You yeah, know, yeah, that's it, you about. Read. But so if we, as we approach this airbase, I got a ping for the, uh, the handshake, which mm -hmm. and then after, not long after that we start getting shot at. So that yep. would potentially suggest some kind of friend or foe system. Can I ping hey. the system myself and try and uh, see if there's anything out there listening? I'd be careful in case you get your brain taken over. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm, if, I'm, if, I, if that's something I can do, I'm going to just let everyone be aware of what's happening. Right. Because if, if it is, then right. they can they can protect or secure me if needed. If he's announcing so. that, I'm going to load a stun dart and aim it right at his neck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll also pull out my sonic stun pistol and pull it at the other side of his neck. <laughs> confidence. <laughs> like, confidence. Hey, <laughs> it's a precaution in case you go completely nuts and try and kill us all. I can see the fact that one person already done that. Non -lethal. It's okay. Because <laughs> the fact that one of our team members potentially already has been doing murdering, it's a good precaution to make. So I'll, I'll say that uh, this uh, requires a uh, uh, communications role here. So a skill of, uh, your skill is 12 there. Okay. And pass. By a decent amount. Yeah. All right. You send out a, a you know, a general sort of, uh, you know, you know, a packet pigging sort of situation to uh, see what, see what ports are open. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you do... Uh, successfully, uh, you know, get a the base signal of a, a hello, but it's not letting you in, sort of situation. Okay. Password scenario. Authentication required. <laughs> okay, let's uh, see if we can probe this system because I do have uh, security and communication operations and hacking skills. So let's give those a try, right. shall we? All right, then I will give you enough time before the next volley to uh, give a roll on this here. Okay, I'm just taking my skills on the. So it should be, a... if I'm making it right, it should be an 11 for the hacking. That's what we're trying to do, isn't it? Mm hmm. Actually, okay. need to double check something here. So you rolled a 7. Yeah. Because it should be the 11 for the hacking and the security is a 12, so the hacking be the lowest one. I assume that's what you do. Uh, yes. I actually need to double check something here. Make sure I'm not screwing this up in, in a weird fashion. Alright. So, so how much did you make it by? Uh, it should be an 11, so... Uh, four. Make it by 4. Alright. You do get some progress, but it is unfortunately... Uh, not letting you fully in, sort of a, you know, you know, you're we're aware of your your intrusion and nice try, and you know, it's sort of the computer the computer version <laughs> of what's going on. Here. Okay. Access denied. Okay, so they're not going to get into that one, not remotely anyway. So, can I tell by the the response if it's a military response or civilian style response? Uh this seems like a mil uh, a military style response. Okay, so we'd probably instead of approaching an airbase, uh, probably uh, airport more like we're approaching an airbase instead, something that would be secured. But it sounds like, which means that tourist well, point is the only I, thing. I will, well, I will also say that the the uh, the interaction you just had was also very much not alien. A.K. You didn't oh. require any of your special programs or codes for that. Interesting. So we approach an alien facility and we get a non-alien response. Yes. <laughs> That is, yeah. that is actually very interesting. Chat suggests that because it's a military base, we should try password one two three four five. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> yeah, is there a luck roll? Mm, there is uh, some things that are sort of a you know go for that. Um, so, what are you trying to luck up here? 
Well, just if he wanted to try the random pass, almost obvious password. Well, I believe somebody in the group does have uh, intuition. I do indeed, actually. We have a 15 on it. So, would that be a roll for 15? See if it passes, uh, or, is that some, or is it just a bonus to something else? So you can roll intuition. I will say that this is going to be a very uh, difficult roll. Okay. But it is possible. So you you know so you're going to be rolling, but I will be doing the behind the scenes math on this one to let you know what's going on here. Okay. Hey, it's right. a good looking roll. <laughs> Let's find out. Good looking roll, but you uh, can basically try to put in a few passwords, but it's not you don't get anywhere. Damn. So uh, the way the way intuition works is that. There, you know, the you have the you roll against your intelligence, uh, to basically educated guess sort of situation, and then I add the number of correct possible options, and subtract the uh, number of incorrect possible options, and so for that particular roll, you basically have to roll a crit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it is possible, but, but very hard. as you said, I wanted to <laughs> sort of like mm, it's unlikely, but you give it a try. All right, so uh, anything else you guys want to do before uh, anything else happens from exteriors? No, because i got a feeling if I keep trying to hit this computer, it's just going to be a bigger response back. All right, I will also... I don't have anything particular to do, but I want to have like a action ready if it looks like our vehicle is going to be disabled. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty much with uh, Simon at this point because they, this is a situation where I don't have any useful purpose until... We're out on foot and the shit hits the fan, and then I'm a little bit more useful. All right, so there is uh, this is the driving roll, by the way. Uh, the you guys actually speed up, and uh, it looks like you're going to get you know very close to the uh, you know the tower before there is another fire round of fire upon you. Ooh, this is going to be pretty nasty. That's, yeah, that is going to be nasty. Fuck. So uh, you guys are effectively. Uh, within you know very very short range here, uh, so you, we'll say you're about fifty yards out still, when this one Are comes we... in. Quick quick question: uh, the amount of time between the first and the second shot is that about the same as the time between the second and this now third shot? Uh yes, uh, not pro you know yeah, approximately you know could be a few seconds more, a few seconds less. So, so with with I would say that at this point it's probably a reload time or a recharge time or a, something like that. Where, uh, okay, one last little question before you continue. If if our vehicle gets disabled at this point, would I think that we could burst out the vehicle and run to the tower before the next shots are likely to ring out? Um, <laughs> I would say yes. Okay, just something for us all to bear in mind. <laughs> well, since we did like half a mile in the vehicle between the shots, uh, yeah. hopefully that, yeah, that vehicle wasn't moving that much faster than we could run. Yeah. <laughs> Being treaded. All right, so so for this one, there is no cover. So you're going to be uh, you know, facing down you know, quite a bit more of the situation here. Um, so let me double check my math. So that minus that plus that plus that. Um, actually, so, uh, that's going to be a pretty nasty strike there. In fact, that's, uh, sufficient to effectively be a crit. Oh, God. The, uh, amount of fire is coming in. So at least one of those, uh, you know, bullets is going to be doing some nasty stuff here. So, let me, I think it might be just more interesting to sort of, you know, uh, roll, you know, roll on that particular side of things here. Uh, a special table for vehicles alone? Oh, I should look it up. Um, we'll, go, we'll just use this here. And we'll interpret it appropriately. Okay. Six. All right. So, so the uh, blow does double damage. That's not super interesting, but we'll resolve that first one. This is the one that hits the engine block, potentially. So double that. So 46 minus uh, the 13, so uh, 30, and then divide that by by half, so 15, 
And uh, I think I think at this point the vehicle does. It's still moving, but it's slowly quiet a bit suddenly. Is it gonna make it? <clears throat> so, uh, Is it not moving slow till we can run? Um, it's getting about that speed, yeah. So we might as well just bail. All right, so. So you guys do have approximately enough time to get to the base of the tower, you know, in the event that, you know, you guys do uh, opt to leave the vehicle. So, do you? Well, I would say at this point, yeah, I'm, I, I think it'd be a very good idea. We can make it to the base of the tower. The next shot might just fucking total the vehicle with us in it and burn us alive. So... Plus, if we can get to the tower, it'll probably take a shot at the vehicle anyway, because it's still there. Maybe, maybe. Maybe giving us a chance to get right. to the turret. Any major objections, guys? Just got to make sure the pilots are ready to bail, too. Well, I'm going to fucking shout at them to get the fuck out. <laughs> 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 okay, that's it. I'm, I'm going to be uh, unbuckling, and I'm going to get all my stuff together. It's like, okay, go, 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 go out. And I'm going to do my, do my leadership thing to try and get the NPCs to fucking move. Because, you know... Can they put a brick on the gas or something so that it's still moving and is a valid target? Yeah, this is the future. Let's say there's an automated feature for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah, I mean, how lucky it hits the tower and it collapses. It'd be hilarious. I think it's probably not quite that strong, but yeah, it would be hilarious. Well, the vehicle probably, you know, you know, unless they program it quickly otherwise, will probably have a uh, collision detection system, so we'll probably try to not run into things. No. Just sort of Damn, a general systems. knowledge sort of thing, you should know. So yeah, safety systems ruin everyone's fun. Ooh. All right, um, let's see. So so Gepin, what was that roll for? That was just my impulse control. All right, so I will say that you can safely uh, cycle the airlock uh, in about a round. You got, uh, and that will be when the vehicle still kind of at you guys' speed, but afterwards you guys are going to be able to you know, get out of the vehicle and start quickly outpacing it. And uh, everybody, including the clones, which I need to make sure they're actually on the next map, are able to move on towards the airport. Hooray! Oh, they are there. <laughs> yeah, that's useful. So, um, uh, they point that skull to... looks familiar. Curious, yes. yeah. Interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they point to this general direction for where the, the entrance to the structure is. Mm -hmm. And you guys are approximately in these locations. Uh, and we're going to say that, you know, unless you pull these guys out right away with you, that they are uh, either all back in the vehicle, but they could also be with you presently. So I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to drag them along. I'm not going to leave them to get themselves killed. All right. Because they will. They seem a bit derpy. Well, it does seem like combat experience. They are scientists hmm. in a lab, so. Oh, and um, Eli's coming along, but he's much, you know, he's coming for it much slower than you guys. <laughs> I forgot to copy his, his icon over. <laughs> <laughs> keep hitting that. Hmm. All right, I'm going to sprint for the base of the tower. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, yep, everyone get moving. So there we go. There he is at. All right. So um, this is sort of, once again, sort of a combat situation, but uh, I'm not going to be too crazy about it, but I'll have Simon move first. We'll have, uh, so move your, your, uh, to do your basic move. Not when I call out your name to where you need to be. I need so. to find that. <laughs> okay. Two, three, four, five. Hooray. All right. And next up is uh, Norcus and Benson. They are two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. They're running this way. Are they going to get shot? If they get shot, then they're idiots. <laughs> they're also clones. They're fearless, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's more of them. <laughs> Uh, next up 
is uh, Cash. Are diagonals one or two? Uh, yeah, usually one, but uh, if you're in a question, you can always use the uh, the, uh, the ruler here. So they're basically one. All right. Next up is Mal. Okay. How do you get to the ruler, by the way? Is it just the fourth icon down on the left, top left? The circle with the it's like oh. a Q that's up the skew with. Oh, okay. That one. So, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You've got five, you say. Come on, little friend. <laughs> there we go. Getting close to the tower, so hopefully it doesn't get a better shot when we're close. <laughs> yeah, of course. Alex, you're coming in last. Uh, after Eli, technically. He's like. Well, Eli can fucking get. It's He's kind of going behind this little uh, uh, bit of machinery here Fair for the time being. I'll let him off. All right, so back to the top of the round. So far, this is this is about the the the, the round where you would expect uh, another volley of fire, and none of it comes. Good. Next up is uh, Simon. So where are you going? Hmm. All right, I'm going to keep hugging the wall, but I'm thinking if there's any... I probably don't have anything. I'm just thinking if there's something any of us could throw out that would be a, enough of a decoy that would waste a shot. I can make bird calls. The NPCs are out there, man. What more can we do? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sad truth, but yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, you know anyone with uh, 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 tactics knowledge may be thinking that they're actually trying to be a distraction, just so you know. What, the uh, clones? Yeah. I don't think that's yes. smart. Weirdos. <laughs> I don't like them. I, I, I've never liked I don't trust them. <laughs> Now, Just for reference, that... I'm trying to stay as close to the wall as possible so that someone up top couldn't see me easily. All right. Um, so I will say that uh, the the, ta the top of the tower here, uh, with all the devices, uh, is several levels up. So uh, even if you are to get into the the doors over yonder, it will take you a couple rounds to get up to the top as well. So, but uh, what if everyone can get to that the that double set of doors without any? Any issues? I will say that you can all get up there. So, uh, next up is uh, Norgus and Benson. They're going to one, two, three, four, five, and Cash. Can uh, can I just jump through this barrel, or do we have to go around? I can go. Yeah, the, the barrel's okay. actually up on 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 stilts, okay. so you can go under it. I'm good. Oh no, a new version of Java is available. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mal. Yeah. Well, are presently the, the most exposed of the PCs. And now I'm underneath a barrel. Hooray! <laughs> now you're the least exposed. <laughs> Someone's right, shooting. Uh... I'm getting cover. <laughs> Uh, Eli is actually going to take cover behind this machine, and he's going to try to hide. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's probably not going to be much use here, guys. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so top of the line, and it's time for someone to take a shot. All right, so uh, there is only one shot this time, as opposed to a whole salvo, and it is going to land approximately here. Hmm. 
And the clones are red mist. <laughs> <laughs> now it's only a you know a single impact, but it's it's kind of obvious as well because you know you know ice and snow kind of go sort of poof up after it impacts. So it's it's very clear you know that came from somewhere up up top perhaps. Anyone could make a perception roll to uh, try to make a uh, you know an estimation of what you know uh, you know exact location of where that person may be. Hmm. Yeah, go on then. I mean, yeah, sure, I might as well. Oh, just made it on the nose. All right. You you do get the general location that it is coming from approximately this location from, you know, several stories up, of course. Suspicious. Suspicious. Okay. All right. Uh, unless there's anyone else who's doing perception trolls, try to uh, beat that. Uh, we'll move on to Simon. Would would anyone prefer a grappling hook up to the window instead of running for the door? Hmm, that is an interesting option. Well, the, my counter question to your question is: Do you mind soloing Melendra if she's hostile? Well, you can. We we could all climb up the thingy if you want. It's not like it's one of those little like Batman esque things. But it, someone's gonna get up there first. That's true. <laughs> um, but who's the most beefy? <laughs> Probably cash. Really? <laughs> Possibly. I'm not. I'm not joking. <laughs> I think we should probably just do the stairs. Where, where... I mean, you could always go wiggle for the stairs, and you wait at the back, and then we've got two different angles. Oh, well, we breach the door. That's true. I need to see if I do my cool idea though, because I had a idea that would get me to the enemy faster. Hmm. I think I failed it by one. <laughs> oh, so you're you're gonna you're gonna do it. You can time to grapple hook. Yep. God. So, uh, gonna make that, uh, you know, make, make an attack roll. Oh, also bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, you, you fire a thing up, and what's your skill here? Grapple gun skill, let's see. Ooh. It's just one point. Where the heck's the skill? Uh, it'll be innate attack. So you actually make it by one. Oh, cool. Because it could all use the same stat or skill. So your, your grappling hook uh, almost misses, but it actually, uh, uh, you know, catches, uh, you know, just barely on the edge of one of the upper windows and uh, is secure. All right, yeah. I guess I start climbing. What is my what is my base climb? I cannot finding anything on this sheet. All right, uh, your climbing is twelve. Okay, and then I have rope climbing for minus two, and I have climbing gear. Yes, uh, we'll say that because this is kind of in the heat of the moment, you probably aren't going to be able to use your uh, your your uh, your gear. Uh, but uh, give me a base uh, climbing roll, and uh, we'll see if you know how successful you are. I made it even without my rope climbing skill. Yeah. Hooray. <laughs> All right. So you're going to be um, going up pretty quickly. I will say that in two rounds, you will be at the the window. Oh, okay. It's going to take us about four or five to get to that door, so you might want to hold off once you get there from exposing yourself. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> yes, we'll see. <laughs> All right. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, next up is the clones. Um, they they hesitate and move close to this uh, bit of machinery here and say, um, I think maybe running across that open space is a bad idea. <laughs> wow, that's so smart. <laughs> they're, they're actually brilliant, but they're not used to being in actual tactical situations. So <laughs> Either that or they're brilliant and they are just very selfless for you guys. Anyway, <laughs> I just think that stupid in general. That, that's my. I think that this just they've been cloned one too many times. It's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. It's where did this clone come from? Oh, we had copied number two. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, I actually do a double check. Uh, they uh, do. They do have laser pistols out, by the way. At this point, <gasps> so I just want to be sure that they are actually have weapons. All right, wow. next up. We got cash. What are you doing? All right. I'm just going to keep moving. 
All right, uh, Mel. Now, yeah. by the way, you guys could potentially follow, uh, you know, Simon up the rope, but. Uh... Yeah, but one at a time going up the rope where we're shooting is probably not a good idea. And uh, Eli is going to continue to cower because that's what he's like. Alex. Um, are there any lower down windows from the one that's that's been grappled? What's actually been grappled? You know what I mean? Is there like, uh, can we enter through a lower window or something? And then uh, there, there are no lower windows other than it's like a big concrete pillar sort of situation. Okay, so it's basically we're entering. The only option of the grapple is to go through the window where the shots are coming from. So yeah, the grapple you know goes to the window, or you can go through the building. I'm gonna see what Simon looks like. He's thinking. What are you thinking, Simon? Well, I was gonna try to get the clones to cover fire while I climb, and then see if I can hold on adequately while I wait for you guys a little bit. Well, I, I mean, clean. that's not a terrible idea. I mean, if we're going cover fire as a possibility. I mean, if we're going through the door, then two could go the grappling hook pretty easily, potentially. So you get choices there. Mm, from this, from this angle where me and Simon are, would we could we be shot at, or is the angle too steep? Uh the angle looks very, very, very steep. It is possible, but you know, you're not even sure if this person has uh, spotted you yet. Hmm. Now where you're currently located. They definitely okay. saw the clones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well what I'm going to do then is I am going to get my pistol out. I'm not going to fire it, but I am going to keep it trained on the window so that if I see even a hint of someone leaning out to shoot down at us, I am going to fucking shoot back the moment I get a clean shot. So I don't know whether there's some way I can just hold my action and and I'm going to spend I'm going to spend a turn Hold my, my, my heavy laser pistol, I'm gonna aim it at that and I'm just gonna take 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 some deep breaths and get my aim get my aim on for if I see a target. Alright, I think that's a, a very good reasonable action and I will say that you are taking your aim maneuver and so you get the full uh, you know, you know bonuses from your from your weapon there. Alright. Okay. Um so back to the top. Uh the mysterious figure is going to roll for something. Not gonna say what, but they're not shooting. Let me check the skills. All right. So, next up, Simon, you are still climbing. Still climbing, and I'm gonna see if I can like wave at the two clones to communicate that they should like cover fire at the window from where they are. All right. I'll whisper um... that to them if need be. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say that they uh they they, they catch it like they, they they get what you're meaning here so so you you see them sort of prepare their weapons so is a sort right. of response and then that means that I'm one one round away from the window lip yes so uh so in that case is their turn uh Benson's gonna go over here Nork is gonna be over there they're gonna start uh. You know, uh, they're gonna, you know, aim their weapons up, and they are going to fire away. Uh, Ten of the thirteen. They're just taking one shot each. Uh, ooh. There's their skills. But, uh, where is their dealio? All right. So uh, they uh, sh basically shoot right through the window, and you're not sure if it hit anyone inside, but it definitely. You know, if if not that, it hit the you know ceiling inside. So, you know, definitely some harassment tactics here going on. This cool. direction. Yes. Yeah, they've <laughs> already gotten the attention, so it's not like they're revealing themselves. Me, I'm being a little bit more conservative and just, <laughs> yeah. All right, Cash, it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna continue breaking for the door. The, as you approach the door, uh, you will notice that it is very much. What? It, uh, leads, to little, leads to a little stairwell that uh, comes up right into this room over here. You know, you can quite easily see upon coming through the, the doorway. All right, I missed an additive in there. 
Is it open or not? Is it locked? We didn't. Uh, you could the, the, the door to the you know to the outside is presently open. Okay. Looks like it's been kicked in actually. And Based on the, the the number turns since the well, the number times since the last shot, what's likely to be another shot coming off in a second or two, in the next turn? Um, I'd say, given the behavior you saw before, uh, the you know. So when you guys were in the vehicle, there were a number of uh, shots going off in quick succession that basically raked across the vehicle. Yeah. That last shot was a single shot. So, you know, if the you know time frame between you know the previous route of volleys was this is the same, then you're going to be in a situation where, uh, you know, it's st still going to be like three or four more rounds. But given there's a single shot, you're perhaps less confident of that. Okay. In that case, I'm going to go here because I can't make it in that door in this turn. All right. Uh, next up is Eli, who's cowering, um, you know, behind the vehicle. Um, all right. Well, uh, then on to Alex. What you doing? Still holding? I'm I'm going to carry on aiming, you know, feel the, the, the changes in the air, get a, get a comfortable grip on the pistol. So spy, watch for any movement in that window. Still training my pistol on it. All right. So then it goes to the next person's turn, and you're going to see the barrel of a weapon coming out of the window. You what know you what? Do? I'm going to take a shot at the barrel. I know this is a small target, but I've had, you know, I've had two technically two turns where I've aimed. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like I might want to take a shot at this. All right. So roll your skill. Uh, and what, your... what do I get bonuses wise for all the aiming? Because I don't really oh. know that. Um... So you get your uh, ba uh, uh, basics for your accuracy. You're also going to get another plus one for uh, uh, an extra turn of aiming. Uh, what more uh, are you going to be using? Uh, you know, more than one shot. You are you using your heavy laser pistol. I am. So I think it's a triple shot maximum, isn't it? Uh, you can shoot up to ten shots. Oh bloody hell! Basically, but that's oh rate of fire ten, yeah. But that's going to reduce the overall accuracy, isn't it? It's going to reduce the accuracy of individual shots, but since you're sort of covering the area, it actually gives you a uh, a bonus of sorts. I need to double check what that is for. If it means that I'm more likely to hit the barrel of this gun, then I probably will just fucking unleash ten shots of the heavy laser on it. All right, so uh, that will give so... you a plus two in that case, and then okay. we'll go through and uh, explain a little bit more on what that might mean, depending on okay. if you are able to hit. At the moment, my skill is that. So, what are my bonuses for all the aiming and the burst shot and all that? All right. So you got. So you're you're firing ten shots. That's a plus two. You okay. are. You you have you include the accuracy of your weapon, which is a plus six, an extra turn of aiming for another plus one. Holy crap! Because I've got the targeting software as well that I got at the space station, which is another plus two for right. beam pistols. So, it's so plus I eleven. That? Holy crap! <laughs> You're prepared for this. I, I made it by eleven. That was so, a bad roll as well. So uh, the so the doo -doo -doo, um, the recoil of your weapon means that all ten shots hit. Wow! I was <laughs> annihilated. This the barrel of this uh, rifle. This is wrecked. This this gun that they're using is wrecked. It's got to be. I, I'm, do I roll for damage then? I mean, this is a um, lot of damage. Uh, that is certainly a lot of damage. And this is also perhaps a demonstration to you guys that, yeah, these kind of weapons can be very, very, very deadly. Um, just um, I mean, so I'm you know. D4. I'm four, I'm four d six damage with a with a an armor reducer of two. So it's not quite as good as their weapon, but. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a little bit of a roll here actually perhaps two of them all right so you you basically laser off the front of the barrel of this weapon and it falls to the ground <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna take cover immediately and just like well assuming i can i probably can't but you know yeah well you can probably dodge under the uh you know the behind the the tower strut you got right there um you're going to hear something that sounds like yelling or cursing but it's a little little difficult since it's a weird angle where it's coming out from okay 
So, that was something. Um, <laughs> Simon, <laughs> if you see a laser go right, you know, you know, you know, you know, strike the weapon that appeared to be coming out near uh, where you're approaching, uh, laser through it, and then the end of that weapon falls and the weapon retreats back into the window. Cool. <laughs> see, I don't even care whether it's just the barrel. The fact that that's been melted off I mean that's not going to fire straight ever again. <laughs> it's, that weapon is done. I hope. So, you uh, continuing your climb? Yeah, I'm going to be right below the window where I'm confident I wouldn't easily be seen, and I'm going to take a sec to make sure my electronet's loaded before I like jump over next turn to give everyone a chance to catch up. All right. Um, so I will say that we're going to move on to uh, Simon Benson. Uh, they make a couple more rolls. All right, they... Uh... They fire at something. You're not quite sure if it has done, you know, done any damage to anything in particular. In fact, they might not either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next up is Cash. All right, I heard gunfire. Uh, is everyone all right over there? Um, no one's screaming. Well, it was, it was I you probably heard because I assume that um, that over because we I, we've got comms obviously because you know it's thin atmosphere and all that. I'm, you yeah. probably hear a a a kind of uh, Alex saying over the comms, yes, <sighs> as there's a self -congrat -congr -congr congratulatory kind of fist pump, um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I'll thumbs up because from there I can kind of lean out and and just about sort of see you from there. I would say so. Well, maybe not, but. Yeah, everything's everything's cool here. We've disabled their gun from the looks of it. All right, sounds good. What can I see inside of this door that's been kicked in? All right, so it's basically a stairway. You can quite easily make it up. Um, didn't do the whole paint out what's going on here, but uh, we could say you get over here in a single turn. You know, because you're you're hustling. So basically, right. if you wish, move directly to the to your right. And, and I'd love to do that, but uh, to break genre for a second here, I would like to check for traps. All right. Uh, rolling perception. That's actually a, probably a very good idea, in <laughs> fairness. All right. Uh, you do you know, spot that there is no traps, but uh, the stairway itself is not too stable, and... Uh, we were to step on them without having paid some t attention to, you would have potentially had some issues. Okay, you, they would have crumbled, you would have fallen on your face, and you've gotten stuck on the stairway for another turn. All right, already the rest of the team, hey, be careful on these stairs, and I'll start heading up. All right. I've got my gun out, by the way. All right. So uh, you are able to get to this location, yes. You know, you know, quite easily. And there's a door there, I just didn't put it in. <laughs> All gotcha. right, Peter. Okay, wow. I'm, I'm going to get to here and prep to breach. I'm going to get me pistol out at this point because I've been running as fast as I can without it. Which now we're into it, building things a good idea to get ready. All right. So I will say at this point that uh, if Cash and Mal are going to basically hustle towards the tower, uh, the 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 clones are going to keep uh, with their suppression fire, and uh, Alex, I'm guessing you're going to be sort of just keep watching that window. Oh, yeah, yeah. If anything pops out on that window, I'm going to pump it full of fucking laser again. And uh, Simon, if you're just hanging out by the, uh, you know, under the window there, I will say that you guys are able to uh, to reach the, uh, the the top of the tower without any issues. Because now being aware that there are dangerous steps, you're able to avoid any of the ones on the, the way up. You can get to this location before anything else go crazy goes on. Uh, you'll also be in sort of this situation. And uh, the stairway should not be on this layer. <laughs> <laughs> Put that out to the map layer. Don't leave it on the token layer. What's wrong yeah. with you, Matt? You, you crazy? <laughs> it vanished. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway. The stairs closed behind you. <laughs> no, they're, they're still there. I just screwed up. You can probably right click on the map, whatever's there, and just put that to back as well and it'll probably be fine there we go 
So just as we hit the top of the stairs, I want to radio to uh, Simon to let him know that we've just got to the middle, so he knows we're good to go. All right. right. I'm going to ask him to lay down a little bit more fire to get some attention before we pop in. All right. So uh, the the clones go in, uh, go go do their their firing, but uh, we're going to say that we're back into the normal order. The yeah the the person that is hiding up here. Do they see you coming up? Um, doo -doo -doo. interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, so Simon, it's your turn. I will vault the windowsill and try to get to the nearest cover. All right, so you're going to end up in this location, and uh, I'll say you got a little bit more of action if you wish to make make some uh, some activities. Okay, if I have a little extra action, I'm going to try to ready aim. All right, you ready and aim, and you do spot that there is a rather large cyborg right over here that you are familiar with. Their name is Malahandra. They're they're kind of a big deal here. Hi, still still ready and aiming. <laughs> <laughs> not the diplomatic sword. <laughs> she has not seen you, by the way. Her senses Excellent. need recalibrating. So uh, there is going to be some more suppression fire. It's going to strike the ceiling approximately over here. But they are going to uh, try to aim, you know, keep their aim in the same general location. So this spot in particular is potentially very dangerous for the time being. Um, so that's the clones are doing. Cash, you're up next. So you're getting to the top of the stairs. All right. Is she the only person in this room that's not us? Uh, seems to be. There's a bunch of old equipment here that is covered in ice and dust and all sorts of random debris everywhere, but that seems to be the only person other than you three that are in the room right now. All right, I'm going to clear the stairs and take a shot. All right. Yeah, she's in partial cover from that, so there is going to be a, a penalty for that. But... Uh, you know, so there'll be a thing of only a minus one here. So. so you're taking a shot with the weapon of choice being your. Uh... Don't actually have your equipment on my, my, my character sheet here. So you tell me. Uh, it should be a pistol. <laughs> Let me check. I think I have an yeah, outdated character, character sheet for you. So It's like a four millimeter Gauss pistol. All right. Oh, damn. So are you, uh, does it have uh, multiple shots? And if so, are you going to be using them? Uh, I, I actually don't know right offhand. Um, I've got the HUD up link with the, the targeting shot. Um, I guess for simplicity's sake, I won't worry about it. I'll just take one shot. Okay. So go ahead and roll for, uh, to, to attack. Like an 8 out of 12. All right, that's uh, pretty good. She is going to attempt a uh, a dodge here. Do, uh, where, where is this? Where is this? Uh, well, so I had to look for this particular bit of statue. Hmm. Did she see us coming? Um, she saw you, but not Simon, so. Oh, all right, sorry. Yeah. So... She rolled eight. Her dodge is uh, nine, so she, you know, the, the shot goes basically right by her head, and she just barely manages to get out of the way. Russia. All right. Wow, it's your turn. What you doing? All right. These consoles were behind. Are they blocking my run to that? Uh, uh you can move uh, move between them. So. Okay, so I'm going to run to cover here. She's just in range, and then now we've got uh, goal angles covered. All right, you gonna take any shots or anything, or are you gonna leave it leave that to the other folks? I am gonna, uh, yeah, take a shot. Yeah, take a shot. All right, I'm not gonna aim, so it's not gonna be low accuracy, but we'll go for it. 
I mean, I shot her because I don't know her, but she is your friend. Well, right? I've I've never seen this, the android, so I know. I was about to say it's only me and Simon. Mm -hmm. It's only me and Simon that are actually really yeah. know her. To us two, it's just there's an android here that's been shooting at us. To them, it's a friend, it's a yeah. teammate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of, sort of teammate. She's a bit weird. So, uh, how many shots are you gonna try for? Just the one, because the pistol, so standard laser pistol. All right. Uh, so. Uh... Where do they get the actual skill for shooting on this sheet? Uh, in your the ranged weapons, it should have the level that you have for your break. There we are. the damage and all that. The, the uh, ST column. Oh, is that another column in there? Because I can't... In that uh, attack one, it doesn't... Uh, on the version of your sheet I got, your skill is 7. Okay. No, that's a miss then. So. That's all right. Uh, so you take your shots. There he is. So uh, Eli is still doing his cowering business. Uh, you know. And so Alex, you you hear some z zaps upstairs. Okay, she's engaged. I'm gonna climb the rope. Can I like double time it up this rope in any way? Because I don't need to be stealthy now. All right. Give me a climbing roll. I don't have climbing. <laughs> 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 So let's find out if you're going to be able to climb this in a reasonable amount of time or Probably if you're going not. to fall off. <laughs> Probably. All right, so give me a roll at dex minus five. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> Come on, Sorry. it's worse. My dex is nine, um, and you're saying I get minus five. Yes. I fail by eight. <laughs> All right, you, you try to pull yourself up the ra rope, and you just kind of slide back down. No, you know what? I'm, I I did this at boot camp, and ever since the injury, you know what? No, fuck this shit. I, you know what? I'm no, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to run around. <laughs> it's like, I, I used to be able to do this. Oh, God. <laughs> Alex looks at the rope, rubs his hands together, goes, nah. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, you know what I do? As I grip the rope, I kind of in a room, and I'm like, I'm like what am I thinking? This is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. You know, next turn, I'm just going to run around. All right. So it's now Melahondra's turn. From So from her, you know, she dodged behind the console here. Um, you see a laser weapon poking up from behind the console. And then, as well as a hand. And she says, Stop firing! I'm intrigued. I'm down. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so are we going to be out of combat? That's up to you guys. I'm going to keep trained on her and go, what, What's going on, Mal? You know, you may wish to take the weapon from my hand. <laughs> she's very cordial. She's very cordial, cyborg. Killer cyborg. No, she's she, she's offering you the opportunity to take the the you know, the laser pistol from her hand, and uh, you know you know uh, disarm her uh, completely. And by the way, this laser is not the one she had been using. That's you know it doesn't show any visible damage. All right, going to tell her to turn it around, grab it by the barrel, and empty the clip equivalent. All right, she you know turns it. Pulls out the the powder, uh, you know, power pack, and uh, throws the power off to the side, and the uh, uh, the weapon itself off to the other side. Well, I'm satisfied. So, so what's happening, Mel? Uh, what? Well, okay, let me say that I am going to head around via the stairs to go up there. Um, mm -hmm. Let me know when I get there. <laughs> the, uh, the the clones hang back, but they'll be following eventually after you. Okay. Um, so she slowly starts to rise up, uh, and uh, you know, uh, for the new players, you can now see that she is indeed a big spooky uh, cyborg, not as like obvious skull skull looking as the uh, <laughs> you know uh, icon says here, but uh, she definitely 
is not necessarily the the most attractive uh, person as far as all that stuff goes. Do -do -do. Um, do -do -do. Anything else? Yeah, she has a appearance minus four. So just so you get a, wow. a, a general general vibe for that. It's the exact opposite of my appearance modifier. <laughs> um, yeah, she's also quite large. Uh, you know, in fact, she kind of towers over everybody. And when she gets to her full height, her head's kind of bumping up against the ceiling. The ceilings are 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 not, not super tall. You see. I surrender. All right. What are you surrendering for? You tell me. You were the one firing at me just now. Oh, you you kind of shower from Al. Okay, uh, people were talking over each other. I didn't get any of that. Yeah, go ahead. I was just saying you, you sort of shot at our car. I did not know that you were in that vehicle. Who do you think was in it? The clones. Benson and Norcus. I thought they were in pursuit of me. Four? Well, you're not wrong. They have strict rules about leaving their supervision. I sought to disable their vehicle. Why did you leave without us? I have an assignment. From whom? From... from our employer, Reza Khan. I am to be locating a crashed spaceship. Why didn't you tell us about this? Uh, by the way, this is about the time Alex is coming up the stairs. Hey. I was under super special orders in order to prevent the clones from finding out that I would be leaving their supervision. Okay, I'm going to be like... Whew. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just give me a moment. Yeah, I'm coming up over here. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'll, I'll see you actually left the card out here. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Cause see, those stairs aren't going to be able to uh, you know, work with it. God uh, damn by it. the way... Yeah, the, the uh, Simon, your your your, your little uh, you know pet can try to try the stairs, but uh, they're going to be a little hesitant. But I would have told it it can stay with the cart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a detect lie skill, and I would like to use it. All right, go for it. You know, it's successful, barely. All right. So, um, you don't think she's telling you any lies? I'll, I'll holster my weapon. So, Mel, what the hell happened on the ship? What do you mean, what the hell happened? I Our left, and pilot. that was a violation of the rules. Our beloved, well-remembered pilot, I want to say Spongebob, is dead. <laughs> Her name's Nikki. <laughs> Melahondra is going to look at Simon and have kind of a confused look, but it's kind of hard to tell with a face like that. Hmm. What do you mean, Nikki is dead? She was murdered with the, the designs. Alex will explain it better. He's he's doing the case thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is Mel actually knows this because she's like seen it twice before, hasn't she? She saw it. One was like that guy in the station got murdered, um, mm -hmm. and way, then there was the one on, and then one of her, uh, her past like uh, co-workers, if you want to call them that. Yes, I suppose. 
So it's like, I am gonna um, on a on my little computer that's got pipe as you do, um, and show the uh, the photos of Nikki and the designs. Um, I've still got, you know, a hand on a pistol kind of thing. I'm using like a little finger to move it across, but you know, and I'm like, it I'm seems sure. to go on. Yeah, she, she, she approaches something. As long as she's out in the open, that's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move um, around as well, so that uh, lots and lots of people have plenty of angles on her. <laughs> <laughs> as you, as I, yeah. Yeah, I just want to mention that during no part of this am I going to allow the melee murder bot within melee range of me. Oh yeah, I'm 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 not as bothered about that, but yeah, well I am bothered, but not yeah. Um, and I'm going to turn around to her and saying, and with you disappearing, and with now three murders happening when you've been totally in the area, we were kind of worried. I do not understand what is happening because how many people came on that ship to this planet for this to happen there was myself eli you simon uh you know who else was there nikki uh scott and hex lug correct am i forgetting anyone you uh your memory's pretty good in that thing, yeah? You got some photographic memory, uh, you can recall every minute since you left the ship till now? She thinks about this for a moment and says, as much as you can, I suspect, I am not a computer. I'm just thinking if this, you had any blackouts any anything that you suddenly find yourself somewhere where you don't remember how you got there Ooh. let me check something sorry for the delay to be windows open here now Ooh. She is going to reply with, not any time recently. Hmm, I'm going to narrow my eyes at that. <laughs> <laughs> Back in training, there were multiple incidences where I was still getting used to new body upgrades when such things might happen. Do I get any inkling that she's hiding anything? Uh, nope. Okay. Yeah, she seems to be kind of struggling to recall things, but, you know, it's like... <laughs> it, it does sort of seem that she's, like, you know, as as uh, fleshy-brained as you guys are as far as this stuff goes. It's like, do I remember anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> do I notice anything on her, around her, that would, like, uh, any kind of marks, stains, scuffs, especially if they're bloody marks, stains, or scuffs. Well, she is presently wearing her spacesuit battle armor situation, and uh, the you know the the voice you're hearing is actually coming through, uh, you know, sort of voice, you know, thing with you, you know speaker on the front. Um, so you don't you know you're, you're able to see you know her face in total uh, due to the uh, you know the clear screen on on the on the suit. But uh, as far as like anything, you know, you know, under the armor, you don't know. As far as things outside, you know, on the armor, nothing. Things seem perfectly fine. I'm gonna look around at everybody else. Just you know. Mm. Is my detect lie still working for her? Is this all legit? Uh, yes, it is. It seems everything seems great. She, she seems legitimately surprised that Nikki's dead. She then says, I do not wish to be framed for a crime I did not commit. No one ever does. So please let me cooperate as best as I can, but do understand I would like to reserve my rights as they 
are as best as I can as well. I'm going to kind of like smile and shake my head, you know, kind of like uh, a dismissive kind of, and I'm going to say, no one's trying to frame you for anything, Mel, but there's a lot of strange things going on around here and there aren't that many suspects. There's a lot of strange things going on with electronics. And you know what? <sighs> I'm worried. I'm worried that there might be something in some of your hardware. Um, I don't know. This 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 whole thing stinks to me. At this point, I'd like to so lower my pistol because no longer need to aim it, and uh, just say, "Did you send me the uh, handshake request, or did you res or respond to the communication request that I sent?" I responded to a communication request and denied it. I did not receive or send anything else other than the messages via my communication device. She sort of motions to the phone on her or on her belt. Yeah. So I uh, want to just sort of make a point. I received a handshake request uh, from a non-alien source um, from this location as we were before the shot started. No, 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 uh, yeah. So I, I want to specify that the the non-alien stuff you know I'm, if i misconstrued this earlier the non-alien uh, interface was for sure uh you know that that you communicated to oh, uh, was. was at this location the one that came in you're not quite sure where it's coming where it came from okay uh, but you do also know it's non-alien so we got a non-alien handshake request on the approach and shortly after that that's when the shot started on the vehicle So that something is... else. Hmm. So something or someone else sent a signal from probably this location because we were approaching it when when the uh, communication came in. That is very unsettling. I observed the vehicle approaching, and believed that I was being pursued, and thus I wished to disable the vehicle so I could make a proper ex escape. But your vehicle was more resilient than I expected, and so I was finding myself trapped here, and I was seeking a alternative path to disable or discourage a pursuit. If you're trying to disable a pursuit, does that mean this building isn't your destination? No, it is not. She kind of eyes the clones that are now present. Uh, I hate this kind of shit. Uh, what was that, Van? I'm gonna ask the clones if they could give us some privacy. They're gonna sort of look at each other. We're not sure we should do that. Uh, you know, says the uh, the younger of the two. The, the older one says, "Shut up, giving them a few moments. They got stuff to work out, and they're gonna proceed to go down somewhere in the tower." And take a computer with them. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! They just I look like freaking salvage. Yeah, I, I, I left those as tokens so that in case people want to destroy them or push them around or something like that. What are you saying? Benson just grabs the computer and goes, mine, and boss off. <laughs> <laughs> mine! <laughs> yeah, a little outdated, though. It's a few million years old, but you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weathered well. So, so I how are you going to get the ship off? Give them a perception roll, but they don't not going to hear anything. No, go ahead. <laughs> so, how are you planning on getting this ship off this planet? Uncertain. I was to investigate it and see if it was salvageable. If it was salvageable, then I would be attempting to ex uh, extract it from this planet so that we could, you know, obtain ownership of it via salvage rights. If that was not possible, I would inform our employer at, at you know some point that a pickup team was, you know, to be sent, and what would be required to do that. All right, plans? So why don't well, you tell us you team? Here. One at a time. Go ahead. So why didn't you tell the rest of your team about your mission? I was under orders not to speak of it. 
but I think things have gone out of control, so screw those orders. My sentiments exactly. We're here, we may as well look at the ship, and then Hex is probably the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Hex Lug is back with Scott. Uh, the clones were very curious about Scott because, uh, you know, you know, his family has been separated from the human, uh, you know, for, uh, for multiple generations. They're very curious about div uh, divergent evolutionary biology. So, <laughs> but anyway, back, back to this scene. <laughs> Melahandra says, so what do we do now? Well, I'm going to holster my pistol. And I'm gonna sigh, and I'm gonna put my uh, my my two fingers on the the bridge of my nose, and just shake my head and and mutter. It's always the same with these guys. Always giving one orders to one lot, another orders to another lot, and they think it's all gonna work out in the end. Oh, these guys. Why did I expect to it be any different here? It is. It is in the fucking military. Alejandro kind of shrugs, and says. Well, in his defense, I am not that much of an archaeologist. Yeah, none of us are. I say that um, Gepwin and one of us detectives goes goes to check out this ship, and uh, everyone else goes to look into our uh, our killer robots. Are any of these terminals I don't think splitting up's a good idea? Any of these terminals uh, look like they might be active? Because I want to find out where that signal came from. And um, if it's maybe this area, I want to just take a step before we go anywhere. Now, these uh, the equipment in here looks very, very dead, very active. Uh, in fact, a lot of the uh, you know uh, wiring uh, you know uh, yeah, is very exposed because the the coverings for the cables, and things like that, is like decayed off, and so there'd be short circuits everywhere. Especially this one over here that's uh, <clears throat> kind of been you know, pulled out of the ground and dragged halfway across by Benson. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, so, you know, some of the devices, you know, like the tops are like sunken in, or yeah. things are just cracked and yeah, you know, they're just old and the falling apart in various fashion. Yeah, but the rest of this building, though, because we've got dolls here. The uh, is there anything else in the rest of this building we can just take a nose at before we uh, decide on moving? Oh, if you want to look around the airport, yes, so uh, you just, feel free to do such. I just feel like it was, was it a coincidence or was it a good timing that we approached this building as that first signal came in? That's so. up to you guys to figure out. Exactly. That's what I want to make sure, because I don't want to leave this building and find out if there's something here we should have paid attention to. <laughs> and since there only appears to be one other room I can get to, I'm just going to peek through this, this door here to make sure this room's clear. Yeah. Now there's uh, Everything seems very dead. Okay. That seems fair enough. And I assume that door is nothing particularly special. Yeah, and, uh, that leads out to sort of a, uh, uh, you know, a, you know, a, not a, not a um, utility yeah. room, but sort of a, you know, behind the scenes sort of like luggage will come through here sort of situation. Okay. Well, I'm going to return and say, well, this place looks like abandoned. Yeah, I'm going to grab my grappling hooks and start rewinding it and walk to the door and go, okay, let's go take a gander at this ship then. All right. Oh. You know, Melahandris uh, mentions, I apologize for the vehicle damage. I was going to make sure that things were compensated for after we left. However, it ain't mine. <laughs> you, know, you know, however, getting to the ship location will take a bit of a hike without a vehicle. I could easily do it myself. Are you prepared for it? Yep. Uh, we do have some incoming clone reinforcements. We called for help while you were shooting at us. I would suspect you know, no other option there. So we should probably leave the clones with the vehicle and maybe someone else for all that. Very good. I have a hiking skill of nine. Excellent. You're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> so... So to clarify, who's going with Melahandra uh, to the spaceship, and who's going to check out the robots? 
I don't think we should split up at all. I agree. There's two reasons why there's two reasons why we shouldn't split up. Uh, one reason is because if Melahandra goes psychotic, then it's easier for her to kill everybody. And if there's Ender in combat, we're just thinned out. And secondly, we won't get anywhere any quicker because Izix can't run multiple scenes simultaneously. So <laughs> it's exactly the same amount of time to do everything. <laughs> so in. in <laughs> This is the thing I always have to point out to any roleplay groups. It's like, yeah, splitting up actually takes slightly longer to do everything. <laughs> All right, so I would suggest so to the crazy. I suggest to the clones that they stay here, wait for the reinforcements, because clearly uh, Melorandra doesn't want the clones following. We could just call the reinforcements. Someone's gonna need to pick up these clones. Yeah, they're gonna need to pick up. Also, we can also once we get to the ship or get away from the ship, we can always call for them to pick us up. That's true. So, so what are you telling Norcus and Benson specifically? That's a way yeah, to wait for reinforcements. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a bit of wait for reinforcements so, and. So there's two choices: we say wait for reinforcements, and we'll be, we'll be back, or we all climb down Simon's rope and leave and don't let him know. <laughs> I think we should just tell them to. Otherwise, they'll just follow us. Probably. Hmm. We were supposed to go investigate alien ruins anyway. I think we should probably deal with the threat of these robots and then find the ship afterwards, because if the threat of the robots is going to threaten us while we're trying to recover the ship, that's going to be bad. Um, probably going to be easier to do it that way around. And at least they were showing the clones that we are actually doing the mission that they are expecting us to be doing. The, the mission that we have all been given to do. Doing that first and then recovering the ship seems like the polite thing to do. I um I think we should probably look into the ship first. Uh, I don't know if it's related to the robots, but it might give us some information about Melahandre before we have to fight robots and Melahandre. Which one's closer? Uh, Melahandre will say that the spaceship crash is slightly closer, but it is kind of in the weird, you know, uh, not quite the same direction, so... All right, we're going to let them know that we can tell the clones that Mel has classified information that none of us were privileged to, which might affect the robots, but we um, we can't tell them about it. We have to investigate it separately. Interesting. So so that's 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 the line? That's the story? It's a pitch. All right, it's a pitch. We can workshop it. All right, anyone wish to uh, pitch? Well, these are uh, intelligent people, so if you give them a mystery, they're going to want to investigate themselves. So we need to make I sure. I can't make remember it... where they work. Right. So we need to make sure that they're well well aware that coming with us is not an option. I don't remember. Were they working for Khan too? Uh, no. The clones were were not working for Khan. They've basically hired Khan to help out with this because they are. They might have the manpower, but they don't have the expertise on dealing with stuff like this. Most of the stuff they deal with is, is not moving. <laughs> There's always some sort of uh, level of government that has state secrets, right? Oh, yes. Certainly this one. So we just say it's related to that. All right. Uh, thus, there's any uh, other uh, objections to this general plan? I think uh, we can probably uh, sort of handle this in a roll. So who's going to be the the face telling the story? Good God! What kind of role is it? Yeah, what kind of role is it? Uh, unless someone has a persuasion sort of a skill of some sort, uh, we'll uh, do a reaction roll. I've got acting of twelve. Hmm. Acting could be of use here. Now yeah, I've got acting of fourteen. So. But if that if acting is a thing that we can use, then can do. Yeah, that's why I took it for this. <laughs> yeah, because I don't remember there being specifically a deception, but there might be somewhere, I don't know. All right, uh, we'll go with acting. So, uh, so Alex, you want to take it away? It looks like this is the thing. Is, is, is anyone? Is there any way that other people can, like, support me on this to give me bonuses in some way? Um, so yeah, cause if you, if if you're all trying to make the pitch together, and you, but you're the one do, doing most of the talking, I'll say you give a, you know, given that there's other folks that are kind of good at this sort of stuff, 
Uh, it'll give you a plus three. So. Okay. So pretty good chances here. What would be the actual roll if you don't have a skill? Uh, acting is going to be. I mean, like IQ minus five, I think. Yeah. Or uh, performance my, yeah. minus two, public speaking minus five. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a few things, but it's all minuses. Yeah, but, I'll, but I'll, not even I'll technically. Not, I, yeah. I'm not getting involved because my roll will probably screw it, given the minuses. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Alex makes it by uh, six. Um, so they are going to. At the door. I give them that skill. Interesting, interesting. Um, I am going to roll something. I'm just going to double check something. See if they believe you. They're going to see right through me, man. <laughs> Actually, you roll pretty well, so. Doomed, doomed people. They're, they're going to turn out to be like uber killer cyborg robot things made of adamantium. <laughs> So basically, they they have to crit on this one. So, nope. uh, so Dorcas and Benson. No. Benson seems very skeptical of your story. But she I'm doesn't so, say anything. I'm so tempted to put my hand on my pistol and just <laughs> nod at her. I'm just kind of like, this is be so good. She seems very very skeptical. However, she doesn't say anything, and Dorcas basically, you know, is, takes over and says, "All right, we'll wait with the vehicle, and uh, we'll uh, keep in touch." All right. Hell no. As, they... as long as they don't follow us, I think we're okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So you guys all off to uh, track down this uh, crashed spaceship? Yeah, Hi. might as well. All right, so I will uh, require one thing before we finish the today's session. Uh, right. So you say you're you're taking the whole hike. You're doing it by foot, right? Uh, it looks that way. I'm gonna let's sit on my hover bike if it can handle the weight. Unless there's anything Does to my scout. my riding equine mean I can ride the mule? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'll have to resolve this for next time, but uh, I'm going to have you uh, make hiking rules in that case. It's, you know, what, if they are relevant. If they are relevant, sorry. Um, I'm fucked. Yep, same. But if you can figure out a way to, to reduce that, then we'll, we'll see. But I'll, I'll, I'll double check the rules for that. But that will be where we start next time. And then we'll uh, you know, either have you come in strong and powerful and quickly, or you're going to be lost in some frozen wasteland of a planet. And then exhausted and die of uh, exposure. No, no, I'm going to die of exposure. I'll just like unfold my habitation module on the back of my hover bar and just live in that for the entire duration. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. <laughs> well, it can't gain weight when it expands. It's there. Nope. It's, it, it, so it can't. It can't become heavier. Um, I just need to find out how much this thing can carry. Can it carry my weight? So seventy-five. Or so seventy-five. Page seventy-five. Um. <laughs> Wow, I'm totally looking this up. Um, <laughs> da, 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 500 pounds. You could probably carry, yeah. So I, I could sit on this thing as long as it doesn't start getting really steep and nasty and rocky, but it might. I don't know. So uh, this is a, a hover device, correct? Mm -hmm. At some point, you will have to worry about power and uh, you know, fuel got, at some point. That's fine. I've got batteries. It, it can it takes a c cell every 12 hours and i currently have loaded into it uh 20 c cells next that's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> I've got, yeah i've got loads of i've got a's b's and c's because everything i have requires a's b's and c's right. i'll figure out uh what other uh, other issues might be coming on there but we're gonna worry about that next time um, i am gonna so... before this session officially ends i am gonna take melandra to one side and uh and tell her Hey, kid. Sorry about shooting up your gun. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of looks at it and where she left it uh, basically by the window over here. Uh, right there. It's like, I would like to get a replacement at some point, but I suspect this may be coming out of hazard pay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smile and nod, pat her on the shoulder, and just keep walking. 
I, I kind of feel like she's been telling the truth to us, but I'm still not 100% sure whether she's got some weird fucking... She's, she's been fucking root-kitted. I think she's been root-kitted, and that's it. She's got a fucking malware installed, and she's going to go nuts, maybe. But I, I don't think she's aware of it. But I don't know. My turn out. Nikki did it to herself. <gasps> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else has malware. But... <laughs> so, wow, what, why'd you put it there? <laughs> Finished up? Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. Peter? Yeah, just before we end, I'm going to go to Mel and just introduce myself. Say, I am I'm Mal, I'm just you know, being tasked to help out. Because of your new teammates, you know, make make friends after you've tried to kill everybody. Ah, do you also work for Rezagon? In a way, yes. Interesting. We will have to compare experiences and notes at some point. Excellent, we'll do. And Simon? Captain? Nope, oh, I'm good. All right. So we'll close it here. So that was a tense experience, uh, an encounter, violence, laser fights. And we uh, didn't uh, by the way, kill Melandria. And uh, she, uh, and, uh, just so you know, the uh, the weapon that she was using is a uh, uh, to do. That's not her. Uh, is a gauze rifle. It's a pretty nasty weapon. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it costs a pretty penny as well. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty expensive too. I don't have the uh, the price on it right in front of me, uh, but I could probably pr locate that pretty quickly. Uh, it costs seven thousand bucks. Seven, actually, one th seven thousand one hundred. Surprised you guys didn't know she had it. Well, she, uh, 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 you know, uh, she brought with her a large suitcase of sorts, sort of device uh, with her. It was inside that, along with her space armor, which the suitcase was actually her space armor, just sort of inverted around, <laughs> around her stuff. <laughs> nice, uh, you know, uh, easy transport for it. Yeah, um, God's rifle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so effectively she's in a space suit, uh, and that's how she's able to breathe as opposed to uh, most of the party, which has the uh, local breathers uh, provided by the by the uh, the clones here. Which, by I the may, way... I may actually get in my suit then, to be fair. Depends uh, on what I can wear with it, because it's not armored. That's the problem. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go we'll get that sorted out um, yeah, yeah. between sessions. Um, I will say that uh, you guys, with the provided oxygen, have about uh, 24 hours worth of oxygen. So that's tw a full day of running around and getting lost and attacked by robots so you can uh, have with that. Oh, okay, I probably will then get into the bio suit then, even if I only can wear then my trench coat on top of that for armor, because then at least mine can then be shared around and we can extend the oxygen. Because the bio suit will recycle everything. <laughs> and I want it, guys, I mean everything. <laughs> it's 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 kind of gross, but hey, you know, it keeps me alive for as long as the batteries last. You know, if anyone, yeah, if, if he asks uh, anyone if he wants it, if they want a drink, Think about it real hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's uh, finish up. Uh, so, uh, who are you guys? Find your and uh, you know, appreciate you and, and social medias or whatever. Well, we'll we'll start with Van and go up on the list. All right, I'm Van Velding. I do a couple different things. You can find me at Van Velding on Twitter. Excellent. I'm Peter Taylor. You can find me on uh, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter under at Peter Taylor TX. Um, I do a variety of gameplays for the most part. Uh, currently doing um, Graveyard Keeper and Two Point Hospital over on Twitch at the moment. Cool, cool, cool. Gepard, are you alive? Yes, I'm alive, barely. Yes, yes. <laughs> Gepard's been sick. Aww. Hi, I'm Gepard. You can find me on Twitter at Gepwin, youtube.com slash Gepwin, and I also co-host a podcast with Dr. Izix Hi. called Watchers of Tomorrow, which should be available everywhere, mostly now. Yes. So many different places I keep seeing links for. Malik? Uh, I'm Archmage Malik. Um, you can Google me. Um, <laughs> if you're really vaguely <laughs> interested. <laughs> 
is on some YouTubes or something like that. Yeah, I yeah, did stuff. I do, I do stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm Dr. Isix. Uh, I'm on the YouTubes and the, the, the Twitters and things like that. And of course, the Twitch. And uh, until next time, everybody, I hope you enjoyed. And next time, we're going to be investigating a crashed spaceship of some sort. Interesting, interesting. It's going to be exciting. Yes. Till next time, everybody. Toodles. Woohoo. Good deal. Bye. Bye. Bye.